Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great day so far. Um, so today I'm working on a Mitsubishi Gallant. Uh, it's a four-cylinder, 2.4, I believe it is. And I'm going to be doing a timing belt and water pump on it. I'm doing it just for maintenance. The car was parked for a while. This was literally one of those little old lady-owned cars. Um, and we've got somebody who's interested in purchasing it because the little old lady is no longer driving. It's only got 80,000 miles on it. Uh, paint's kind of faded out. But anyway, so we're doing a time belt water pump on it. Now, I just want to say real quick, um, I haven't been able to get onto my channel to answer a lot of questions lately. It just, I've been working my full-time job, which is this right now, and at night I'm working on my own stuff because I have a lot of projects I need to get done. Not very interesting stuff. Um, you saw the video about changing seat covers and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, a lot of it's pretty mundane stuff, so I haven't been able to really put a video up. There's really no point to it. Uh, but I'm going to do one on this. So, but anyway, I do apologize for not being able to get to a lot of the questions and stuff like that, but I'm going to try to get back onto that relatively soon um, and get to that. I do have a lot of plans in the works for the channel and for me personally, so there's going to be some big changes coming up and hopefully within the next three, four months or so, roughly, uh, could be longer, I'm not quite sure, but we're going to see. Uh, I just got to get projects out of the way and go from there. So anyway, let me just show you what I got. So here it is, here's the Mitsubishi 2.4. Like I said, it runs fine, there's no issues, but we're just doing this for maintenance. Somebody at some point did do uh, regular belts on this thing, but now this right here, this is the water pump. And as you can see, the end there, nobody's changed that. That's been on there for quite a while. We're also gonna be doing a valve cover gasket because as you can see, it's seeping out. So first off, I'm not gonna go step by step, but like you gotta take the overflow bottle has to come out and you gotta take the mount out. A bunch of stuff has to come out. It's, it, these are really not that difficult to do. So I'm not gonna go step by step and taking stuff apart and showing you every little thing, but I'm gonna start by loosening up the belts. Nice thing is this thing has the adjustment right there. As you can see, it's got that one 12 millimeter headed bolt and then it's got that long adjuster bolt there. And down here, that's the adjuster bolt right there oops i'm sorry right there that one right there that's the adjuster bolt for the power steering belt power steering and ac that other one is alternator so let me go ahead let me start getting everything apart um and we're going to go from there now one quick thing i want to show you i got the mount out obviously i got the overflow tank just off to the side the motor's not hot so i don't worry about the exhaust melting it I got the belt off for the power steering and AC. The tensioner, the nut that's inside here, that's in between the frame, if you let the motor hang down, you can get to that nut, loosen that up, and then you can get the adjuster. Now, before I take the alternator belt off, what I usually do is crack free the nuts right here that hold the water pump pulley in place. The reason being is now, right now you have the resistance of the belt holding the alternator on the crank so you can crack these, th these things free. If you don't do that, what will happen is you try to crack them free and now this thing's just free rotating. So free, and it doesn't sound right, but you know what I meant. Uh, but anyway, it'll be free to rotate and um, there's no resistance behind it. So it's kind of a pain in the neck to hold and then you usually got to put, wedge something in behind it or something to hold the pulley so you can crack them free. But if you crack them free now, really no big deal. All right, so let's get that done, get that belt off, and then start taking the cover off. Got the upper cover off, got the water pump pulley out, and stuff like that. Really not difficult on these. Uh, so now, what do I have to do? This bracket has to come out, because when I go to replace the water pump, this bracket is attached to the water pump. Basically, all I'm going to do is take the uh, 12 millimeter headed bolt out there and just swing this off to the side. But let me put this up in the air. Let me get the lower cover out, which I've got to take the harmonic balancer, or at least the pulley off. And let's see, uh, yeah, I got the coolant draining. I don't know if you can see the pan underneath there. So, but you're gonna wind up making a mess anyway because there's coolant that gets caught up in there that you just can't get out. So let me put this up in the air and let's see what we got. And there you see the pulley itself is a harmonic balancer on this vehicle. So I'm gonna take the four tens out right there. And I don't recall if this will actually just pull off. You may have to take the center bolt out too. And then there's a couple of tens that hold the actual cover in place. So I gotta get all of those out. So let me start taking those out. Let me take those four out first and see what happens. Sorry, real quick, what I also do is that block of wood in case I didn't mention it. That 
I let when I let the motor down, it hits the pan. Just so I can lift the motor and manipulate it up, or you know, let it hang like it is right now. And like I said, there is that 17 millimeter headed adjustment. It's a little tight to get to. Sometimes you actually got to pry down on the motor slightly just to get in there, which is what I had to do on this. But it's not super, super difficult. Um, yeah. So let me start. Let me get those tens out and see if that uh, pulley just comes right off. It might. It might not. I don't recall. Got the bolts out. They were 12 millimeter headed. I think I said 10, but they're 12. And then this does does pop off. And it's centered on there by a dowel pin, see that? So, all right, let me get those tens out, let me get the cover off. Okay, I got the covers off, and this one actually has a balance shaft belt right in there, so it's got two belts. It's hard to tell if somebody might have changed this belt at one point in time, I don't know, but obviously they didn't put a water pump in it, so that's our main reason for doing this. Uh, and it does have something leaking, I'm not sure if it's leaking down onto the hydraulic tensioner here or if the hydraulic tensioner is seeping out of the bottom but regardless we're replacing all of that so you got to get this apart and then you got to get the um, balance shaft belt off so we're going to start taking everything apart here and this thing has a dual adjustment for the belt itself you can actually adjust the pulley you see those notches in it right there that's for a special tool so you can adjust a certain amount of tension on it and then you pull the pin out of the hydraulic tensioner and that doubles up on the actual adjustment uh, doubles up I don't know if that's the right wording but uh, this basically adds the tension to it so it always has tension because if you just had a mechanical adjustment here a single time adjustment eventually the belt will get slack and this tension will take up for that slack over time so let's start getting the rest of this off so I can get the water pump off okay with all the covers off and everything out of the way so now I can pull the water pump off what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the belt off first because I believe that, that one lower pulley there I think that goes onto the pump. I don't have the new parts yet. I'm still waiting for them. What I did do is I lined up the timing marks. As you see here, this is lined up to this mark here. And I did the same on the bottom. And I want to show you something on the bottom, so let me put it up in the air. And there's the underside. Now this balance shift, this has two balance shifts. I didn't, or actually, no, I'm sorry, this is the oil pump. That's the balance shift. Or vice versa, one or the other. Anyway, the um, as you see, that mark lined up to that notch. This lined up, let's see if you can see it that notch in this back piece lined up there that's actually a tone wheel technically for the crank sensor which is there this piece slides in between there there's like a um, a gap like this and that piece actually just slides right through the center of it now this i got a funny feeling this is off uh and it has to line up over here but i'm not 100 percent positive but now this is one third the size of this so if I rotate this one turn, this is going to be over here. Rotate another turn, it's going to be over here. But then the crank, uh, the camshaft is going to be off. So I'm not too concerned about it being an oil pump or a balance shaft because what I'm going to do is once I get the new belt in, it's going to have the marks in the kit showing you where everything needs to be. So then I'm going to line that up that way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my hydraulic tensioner off. That should give me enough room to get the actual main belt off. Then I'm going to start pulling the pulleys off. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here loosen up this here as you see this is off center because what's happening this is on a cam i'm going to loosen this up rotate this so i can get this belt off so let me just start doing all of that and see how that winds up so there we go got the tensioner out of the way it's just two bolts comes out if i, I don't know if i'm reusing it i'm assuming that it comes in the kit so now you basically just pop the belt off come on Just like that. And like I said, this I'm not too worried about. This is going to rotate, however, and I'm pretty sure that's the oil pump itself. So now I can get that belt off, and now I can concentrate on that, that one. Now to get that one off, I am going to have to take the crank sensor out, and I believe i got to take the crank pulley out. I might be able to sneak it out from behind it, but I'm not sure. So let me work on that and see what i got to do. So what I did, instead of taking that lower crank pulley off, I started to rotate the motor. Now, you can do this as long as you're careful. See, now I rotated it, and I was able to get it out. So, you could do this as long as you're careful. Because as you're rotating it, if all of a sudden you feel the crank come to a stop, like it hit something, and like I said, you've got to do it slow and gentle. If you hear it tap something, hit something, stop, because that means you're hitting a valve. So, this never did that. It was nice and gentle. And now I can actually, I'm going to leave it alone until I get the new belt, but I'm going to pull it off. And as you see, my timing mark is way off. Now it's down at the bottom when it's supposed to be all the way up top. So now what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to start working on getting the water pump out. Get the water pump out, I gotta take that 112 out and get that tensioner pulley off of there so this way I can get to the backside of the pump itself. So let's start working on that. There you see I got that tensioner out of the way. I got the three bolts out from underneath on the water pump and it started to drip out. Like I said, you are gonna make a mess. There's no avoiding it really. I don't think this thing has a block drain. I never even bothered to look, but I don't think it does. From what I recall, maybe it does. Is that one? No, it's a threaded hole. That's for the balance shift. Do not take that bolt out right there. That's for the balance shift. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't believe these things have a block drain. So, I could be wrong, but... So anyway, let me let this thing down. And I got this thing dripping into my bucket here, and unfortunately I got my bucket on top of that. So, I'm not gonna be able to prop the motor up a bit. If you need to prop the motor up, then you're, just, you're pretty much guaranteed I'm making a mess because then you can't get the bucket underneath it. So let's let this down and see what I can do from there. And there you go, got all the bolts out and I'm starting to get the pump itself off. And as you see, it's got a tube to the back. That's, oops, why did I lose my light? There we go. I have a tube to the back there. That's got an O-ring in it and that's what's held into the pump itself. So I already started to pry it out. It should come right out. Some of them, sometimes you'll get if I can get to it. I've got this thing at a weird angle right now. Because I have the bucket underneath it, I have the thing up a bit higher. Let me get something to stand on here. Get my little pry bar. So now, sorry about that. So now, I guess they just pry off the back and try to pop it. Let me zoom in a little bit. Just like that. And always remember to replace that O-ring. Don't just put silicone on it. I mean, that's just, it's a recipe for a leak. I've seen people put silicone on it. Silicone does not create a seal on a situation like that. Uh, it can help, but you know what? A lot of times it creates more of a problem than it fixes. So just replace the O-ring. Uh, they're readily available at the parts store. Just pick, if, if they don't have a listing for it, just pick it off and go to the parts store. I'm sure they have a selection of O-rings you can choose from. Uh, but yeah, so now the pump itself. Should come out of the hole. Might have to manipulate it a little bit. But you get the general idea. That's how it comes out. It will come out of there. I may actually have to take the bucket out. And as you see, I have the bucket on top of the block of wood. I may have to take the bucket out and let the motor down on a block of wood. Because if you look, the motor is down at an angle right now. So this way it'll pitch the motor up and then I can get the pump out. So let me go ahead and do that. Took the valve cover off while I was waiting for parts. I just got them in. Um, as you can see, this motor is clean as a whistle on the inside. And like I said, this was seriously a little old lady owned vehicle. Um, but yeah, so anyway, this thing this thing has a nice setup. And I always liked how Mitsubishi did this with their spark plug tubes. Instead of them being pressed into the valve cover, this is what they look like. And they just sit over top and they have like a ridge inside. See that? And they basically go down and bottom out. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that. Then we're gonna put the new valve cover gasket in the valve cover. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peen out these holes slightly. I'm gonna basically, they're caved in to this end a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peen them out slightly with like a punch and a hammer, do all of those. This way what'll happen is it'll give a little more grip. As you can see, they're kind of bent down, beveled down just slightly. But I do that, it helps give a little more tension to the gasket itself. So let me get all of these in place. Let me get the valve cover gasket in place and then let me bolt it down. Very simple, it's just a bunch of 10 millimeters and a couple of uh, wiring harnesses that had to come out of the way. And then the coils too had to come out of the way, but really not a big deal. Now with the gasket laid in place, if you notice on this style where it sits in a channel like this, it's kind of loose fitting. And when you flip it over to lay it in place, the it, gasket itself could fall out. Well, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually take a pair of pliers and I'll pinch the edge just a little bit like that and that'll lock the gasket in place now I got to do that in a couple spots it's not going to hurt anything you don't want to go bananas doing it but it's not going to hurt anything you just do that and it'll hold the gasket in place this way when you flip it over it doesn't just fall out there you see I did that right around each bolt hole basically just to try to keep the gasket in place so it doesn't fall out 
and that'll do just fine and this way when I bolt it down it'll get squished right in the right spot. So let's get this in place and we'll go from there. Now with the valve cover bolted down in place, the bolts where they go down, the bolts aren't shouldered and neither is the gasket. The gasket doesn't have like a sleeve or anything and the valve cover itself doesn't have any stops. So basically I could tighten that thing down as far as I wanted to and actually crush the snot out of the gasket and ruin the valve cover and everything else. If you don't have torque specs, which a lot of you don't have it and I understand that, best thing to do is when you're tightening them down, as you're going, you can kind of feel that point. I mean, you see how much effort can I possibly be putting into this? I feel it coming to a point where it actually pretty much comes to a stop. And I did the rest of them like that. You could pretty much feel it. And you want to go across and you want to feel each of them because the gasket will crush over a period of time when it's just sitting here. But yeah, it's you kind of feel that point where it kind of stops. And then stop. If I put a little electric gun or something on there, I could... I could whale them down even further than that. You don't want to do that because you're just going to distort everything and create a problem. So without a torque spec, that's how you have to do it. Um, like I said, obviously you should torque it. That's the way you should do it. But I know most of you are not going to have that uh, information available to you. So just do it that way. You'll be absolutely fine. There'll be no issues with that. So now let's get on. Let me just put the rest of this back together, put the coils back on, and then we're going to work on that timing belt. So now down to the timing belt and water pump. Now the water pump, I got to get in there and I got to clean the gasket surface, which is going to be a little bit of a chore. You can see a piece of gasket still stuck there, um, and I'm going to replace that O-ring, get the new water pump on. Now one thing to change this upper idler pulley for the timing belt, I got to take this power steering bracket off. Power steering bracket has got two bolts on this side right there, and it's got two bolts on that side right there. I'm not sure if I can get that top one out without taking the power steering pump off. But I think I could probably wrench it the whole way out and walk the bracketry out. Uh, all I really need to do is get it out far enough to get to the nut or bolt or whatever it is that holds that pulley in place because I'm going to be replacing that pulley. So let me do that. Let me get this cleaned up as far as I can and um, at least this way I can get the pump on and go from there. All right, so I got the power steering bracket out of the way so now I can actually get to that pulley to change it. I got the gasket all cleaned off. I just got to spray it down with some brake clean just to get all the any residual stuff off of there just so I can put that down in place. I got to say one thing. The two bolts that went down through the front here, whoo, were they tight. Like seriously tight. I had to I had to unbolt the pump to get it out of the way because I could not get in there with anything to break it free. I, too long of a wrench. It was too long. Too short of a wrench. I had no leverage and I could not break them free. My electric gun couldn't break them free. I wound up having to use an air gun uh, to get it loose. So, but anyway, so let me do that. I'm going to change that pulley, clean that down, get the pump bolted up. Like I said, I got the O-ring off, so I'm going to put new, the new O-ring on there and get it all together. So the oil pump, the oil pump, the water pump's in place. The reason that top bolt is loose is that's the bracket bolt. I just put that in there to make sure that it was lined up with the threaded hole before I bothered to tighten all the other ones down. So I've seen it happen where you tighten all the other ones down, you go to put that one in later and the hole is off just slightly and then you can't get the bolt started. So that's the reason the bolt is in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to put the uh, balance shift. Whoa! Not sure if you heard that. That was some wicked thunder. Wow. Okay. Well, anyway. So here we go. Here's the diagram that comes with the timing belt. And as you can see right here, number seven, that's the oil pump like I thought it was. And as you see, the notch here lines up with the notch there. But what we're going to do is we're going to put the balance shaft belt in first and then uh, tighten up the tensioner. The tensioner actually has no way of actually physically putting tension on it other than with your fingers. Uh, the other ones have holes in them. See that? That has holes right there. That's for a special tool. I don't have the special tool, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. But let's, uh, yeah, let's get the balance shaft belt on first and let's go from there. So here we go. That mark is lined up and this moves pretty easy. So it's just a matter of keeping it in the right spot. And tension is going to be to the bottom of the belt. So we're going to have the top taut and then this way when I get the tensioner in place, this way the bottom will tension and keep the marks on the same spot. So now the bottom is not lined up, like I said, because I got to get this belt behind here. And now also, unless... Wow. Ooh, that was some thunder and lightning. So now belts, um, unless specifically marked or something like that, it doesn't matter which way they go on. They can go on this way, or they can go on this way. So, um, like I said, unless specifically marked. So I gotta get this belt tucked in behind here, 
And what I'm gonna do is I'll get this behind here and I'm gonna rotate the crank in the process of getting it on. I figured, let me see if I could show you by putting up my tripod. But basically I'm gonna tuck the belt, it's kinda of hard to see it here, tucking the belt behind this ear that's sticking out for the crank sensor. And now let me rotate, get this in place. What I'm gonna to start to do is rotate this assembly if I get my finger out from it behind there. I just got it jammed in there. So now you're gonna walk this around. And like I said, if you ever do this and you feel it come to an abrupt stop, and like I said, I'm doing this super gentle. If you feel it come to an abrupt stop, stop, you're hitting a valve. If you can't do this, then you're gonna to have to take the pulley off. Just keep that behind there. See, okay, so now it's behind. So now we're gonna back, back up because the timing mark, let's see if you can see it. The timing mark up here has to line up and it's not lined up just yet, but that's what I'm gonna work on now. But I just wanted to show you how to do that I'm going to put the camera away and then I'm going to start assembling that. But that's basically all you need to know for doing that. Again, if you start rotating this and you feel it come to an abrupt stop, like it's hitting something, that means it is hitting something. It's hitting a valve. Stop what you're doing. Go back because you're about to bend a valve. Just tapping it's not going to hurt nothing. But if you wrench into it, you're going to bend a valve. So let's get the rest of this on there and we'll go from there. Now with that in place like that and the marks are lined up, now what I gotta do is I gotta get the crank sensor in place. And the crank sensor, like I said, see that? It's got that groove inside there. And that's what this piece slides through. So now, you just kinda gotta like lay it down in place, and that's it. Just make sure it's in the right spot. Make sure it's sandwiched in between here. So now this piece is sandwiched in between those two, or in between that single slit that's in there. So now I can catch the bolts on there. This too, this being plastic, you don't have to go bananas tightening it up. So now the other thing too is here's that balance shaft, or actually, I'm sorry, oil pump. So now we can rotate it and get it right there. Now you would think oil pump, what difference does it make? Well, it can actually cause a vibration because of the way they have it balanced out internally. Sorry, the cameras were around. It is, we got wind blowing through here and thunder and lightning and everything else. So yeah, the wind is kind of kicking everything. As you can see, it's not me doing that. It's actually the wind doing that. So, all right, let me get those things on. Let me start getting everything with the timing belt together so we can get that on. I just wanted to show you real quick, now that that's all together, here's the adjustment for the uh, balance shaft belt. And basically you're just gonna push up on it like this to get rid of any slack that might be in that belt. And tighten down on it, that's it. That's all you do. There's like, like I said, there's no preset I'm sure they probably have a special tool for it somewhere, but really that's it. There's there's no other way to do that. And any one I've ever seen, there's just not a lot of tension on these things. So, all right, so on to the rest of it. As you see, I got that all hooked up. I gotta get this to line up and uh, yeah, that should be about it. So let me just clean everything down. Let me start to assemble the rest. Here's the main tensioner for the timing belt itself. And as you see, this thing's wobbly it's supposed to be like that because you have a single adjustment here that takes up the pre slack and then the hydraulic tensioner applies to here or yeah applies to that side and pushes it so what you're going to do is i'm going to set everything in place i'm going to set the pre-tension here and then we're going to pull the pin on the actual other tensioner and what happens is that one will take up the slack as the belt stretches over time so now you leave this loose and you basically set it up over here just like this. So now it's gonna be loose. So now I gotta put the end bolt in here. The end bolt, the shoulder sticks out just a little bit more than the tensioner itself. So once you tighten down on it, this should still move. So you wanna make sure of that too. Because if you tighten it down and it don't move, then you got a problem. So you wanna pay attention to that. So let me get that bolt in, which is this. Let me just tighten that up. And that's going to move freely, so let me, let me go find my 12 so I can actually tighten that. And there we go, just tighten that up nice, nice.
and there we go. Now it's nice and tight and see that? Moves freely. So, and that's how it should be. So now with everything else assembled, now I can put the actual hydraulic unit in. Actually, I was going to put this in and I thought better of this. Do this last. Put the belt on first and get everything lined up and then put this in. You'll save yourself some aggravation. So let me get the belt in place first. Make sure your timing marks are where they're supposed to be. That one's perfect. That one's perfect. And then I'll check the top one. Make sure that one's good. And then we'll get that in place. One little trick I wanted to show you. Now I got the belt in place up top here. And you see the mark is lined up. What I do is I zip tie it down in place. Now this is on the lowest points. I could probably go even lower on this side because this side is going to tuck under to catch the tensioner. Whereas this side is going to be almost straight down to catch that one pulley on the back side. The reason I do this is because a lot of times you're sitting there fighting this thing underneath trying to get everything lined up and all of a sudden the top pops off. And then you wind up getting aggravated and saying bad words and you throw things sometimes. Not that I would ever do that. But anyway, that's something that happens. So that's the reason I do that. It saves you some aggravation. So let's put it back up in the air and see what happens. And now with everything in place, you can see that the belt is like on the verge of popping off of there, but that's okay. Once I tighten up on the actual tensioner itself up here, it'll, it'll tighten up the belt on this side. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, sometimes you'll get it to where that mark, the timing belt will be um, rotated this way slightly. But basically, once you tighten up on the actual belt, it'll drag it up. Like, it'll be more counterclockwise a little bit. This one happens to be pretty darn good. So now, let's see if I can do this with you watching me. I don't know if I can. Yeah, it'll be a little bit of a pain. But you get the idea. I'm going to do that. i got to pick up on this actual tensioner a bit, and then push the hydraulic portion in place. So I'm gonna do that, I need two hands to do that, I'm not gonna set up my tripod for that, but you understand the idea. Do that and then I'll tighten it up and we're gonna go from there. So now that we're at this point, since the tensioner's tightened up, this one, see those two marks there? They have to come down in order to tension up. And the reason they come down and not up is, and there used to be tools that were actually weighted. They would actually have a weight hanging off of them and you would put them in there and let the weight hang down and when the weight basically took up all the slack and after you put a little tension on the crank in the opposite direction to take up slack on here or to create slack on here then you would tighten it down and at that point you would know that that's your perfect spot so now since i can't do that what i'm gonna do because i don't have the tool i'm gonna use these this is my tool i'm gonna use this i'm gonna put these up in that hole and all I'm going to do is, I don't want to sit there and wrench down on it. All I want to do is get rid of the slack. That's it. So let me get these up there and let me get rid of the slack. So basically that's all I have to do and it's tight. I wound up having to go to the next size up because the other ones were too small and they kept slipping out. I got these in there at an angle like this and tightened it up. There's no, no way I could do that and show you at the same time. But now these are perfect too because, see, they actually pop out relatively easy. You don't want to put a lot of tension in it. All you want to do is take away the slack. So now that the slack is gone... The easy thing to do is just pull the pin out. As you saw, it barely moved. I might even be able to put the pin back in. No, it didn't move just enough. So, but that's it. That's really what you want. So now it's a matter of let me put all the covers back on and we'll go from there. I'm going to clean the front cover because the cover had some oil on it. So let's do that and we'll be done with this. The lower pulley on. I got everything together. I'm going to leave all the accessory belts off and stuff like that for right now because I'm going to start it first. I'm going to See how this thing sounds. I got the battery connected because I had that disconnected before. Let's just hear how this sounds. There we go. She sounds good. Now we're not going to leave it running because we don't have belts and we don't have any coolant in it. So it sounds nice. The time belt is nice and quiet. If you had the timing belt too tight, it would actually start singing, make some noise. So, that's it. I'm good with that. Lights on the dash, that's obvious because, because of the uh, no belts. So, alright, let me just finish up the rest of the installation, and we should be good with that. That's pretty much it. I got the coolant topped off. I did this all last night, so it basically drained down, uh, but I got it all filled up. Um, 
Turns out the AC compressor is no good, so I'm gonna have to replace the AC compressor. But it runs great, everything's good with that, so we're gonna go on a road test in a little bit after I get the compressor changed out, and then we'll end this video. So I just went on a quick little road test, because I forgot this car's not registered, so I'm driving around with no plates on it. And I just stopped in the rec center parking lot. Uh, but anyway, that's it. Car runs great. AC works good now. Um, everything's good. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I hope you got something out of that video. Um, like I said, I hope to get more content, better content coming out soon. Uh, probably be in the next couple months. Um, but I'm planning on changing up some stuff too. Uh, I'm still going to do the, you know, tips and stuff like that. And, you know, general wrenching stuff. Uh, but I'm also going to get into some projects and whatnot. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's coming. So... Hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.